Hello and welcome. This is James from the DSO Imager channel. Uh, tonight I'm going to do a first look on the beta version of uh, Noise Exterminator from RC Astro. Now Russell at RC Astro, he uh, is the one behind the original uh, Gradient Exterminator from a few years ago, a Photoshop plugin that does uh, an amazing job of dealing with uh, light gradients. And then recently, I think it was last year, uh, he had released Star Exterminator. And uh, Star Exterminator removes the stars from our images. I've done a video on that, uh, so definitely check it out. But it does a fantastic version uh, or a fantastic job of removing stars from our images. And so just a day ago, he uh, released the beta version of his denoise de uh, programs, uh, Denoise Exterminator. Uh, and like I mentioned, it's available for free for everyone right now while it's in its beta uh, state. So what we're going to do is take a quick look at this, uh, go over a little bit of the information, and um, I think he's got a real winner here. All right, so real briefly, let me uh, show you his website. And I will, of course, uh, provide links uh, to this website in the description of this video. Uh, but here it is. Uh, he will have a Photoshop plugin, uh, but f for now it's a uh, Pix and Sight only. And if you want to try it out, just click on Free Trial, select the Pix and Sight version, plug in your email address. He's got instructions on how to put this in there, and then you're up and running. Now this is AI based uh, noise reduction. Uh, so the thing is, it's a little bit of uh, controversial in the past about using AI. Uh, in a Cloudy Nights forum post, and I just wanted to highlight this. He says here, technically the way Noise Exterminator tries to walk this type rope, type rope is that its neural network is not generative. Generative networks invent new information by some process or another, often using a combination of features they have been trained on, plus an element of randomness. So basically, that's been one of the issues with uh, other uh, denoise programs out there, is that um, they they can create uh, basically fictitious data around, especially if you're if you're not careful with them. Uh, I used Topaz de Denoise in the past, and uh, I used the low light option, and I would use a very uh, small amount, and that seemed to do a pretty good job without altering the data from what I could tell with my own eyes. Uh, but Topaz works great on regular photography, uh, but it's not designed for astrophotography. So uh, Russell's product here is specific to astrophotography and it uh, you're gonna see this beta version does a really nice job with it alright so let's take a quick look at some pictures here so this is the helix that I took and by the way this really works great on images that have uh, a limited amount of exposure time so this shot of Helix, I don't remember off the top of my head, but it wasn't, it was like 12 or 13 hours or something like that. It wasn't my usual 20, 30, 40 hour uh, jobs. I've noticed that on really high exposures, because I've been playing this with a bit, the impact is less, but that makes sense, because if you're getting 40 hours on something, I mean, you're, you're killing the noise pretty well as it is with that exposure. But anyway, uh, let's take a look at how it does here. So if we open it up, the way this tool works, is we have two main sliders. Now, uh, the first time you run it, make sure you select your AI. Your AI, AI will be in the Pix Insight library. You can see all my uh, Star X Terminator AIs here too. By the way, Star Exterminator uh, AI-10 just came out like the same time and it, and we'll take a look at that too. Uh, but there it is, the very first version of Noise Exterminator. So you select that and these are the default options. 
here. And this runs pretty quick also. And if you have it set, if you're running like an NVIDIA GPU and you uh, enable that function, it'll run in a couple of seconds. All right, so here is the Helix with the default settings. So denoise at 0.9 and detail at 0.15. Uh, here, denoise strength. I'll leave that up so you can read it. And uh, there's what the detail does. All right. So, yeah, you can see this did an amazing job with the noise. And did we lose some detail in there? I don't think so. Maybe a little bit. An important thing to look at is the stars. All right, so it doesn't look like it's messed with the stars too badly. And this one is where I have the denoise at 90 and the detail at 59. So I cranked up the detail on this one. And I mean, yeah, that, that did a great job. I'll just leave it up here for a second. I mean, yeah, looks great. I mean, the amount of graininess you leave in your image is a, a matter of taste. Some people like to leave a little bit of grain in there, and that's what these sliders are for. So if you don't want it super slick looking, you can pull that slider back. Uh, let's look at a couple more. So... This is a starless version of the Dolphin Nebula. And here it is with 90 denoise 59 detail. And I mean, you don't even have to zoom in. I mean, the, the difference here is extremely apparent. Look how grainy this area back here. Uh, this particular target was uh, difficult for me. It's very low to the horizon, and I didn't get the amount of exposure uh, that I wanted. I don't remember again. I think it was around 12 to 15 hours or so. I had tossed away so much data. But yeah, the difference is pretty impressive. So it's pretty much eliminated all of the grain all of it. So, I mean, maybe this one is a little bit too smooth and perhaps just dialing back that 90 a little bit would do the trick, but still, fantastic job. Clearly controlling artifacts I don't see anything new being created. Uh, this is um, linear, right? And it's the S2, right? S2 is always going to be grainier than, um, uh, than, say, HA. There have been times where I've run noise reduction against HA and O3, but not the, I mean, excuse me, S2 and O3, but not the HA, because the HA is so clean. But uh, here, uh, the S2 benefits from it. So this is the regular. All, all I've done is run dynamic background extraction on it. And this is dynamic background extraction with 77 denoise and 48 detail. So it's a huge difference. Look at that. All right? And this is this is not stretched. Yeah, I mean, so removing the noise, you can actually see some of these fainter structures better. And the stars don't look weird. Topaz the noise did some really weird things to the stars. And, uh, I mean, that's, that's probably one of the biggest differences there.
Now, some of the strategies behind doing noise reduction early in your processing is in when you go to do star removal or deconvolution or run unsharp mask or whatever, the data is already clean. And so you're not going to be enhancing any noise artifacts. All right, here we go. M1. So this is M1 on the right here with the default settings, right? Default settings 90 and 15. I definitely feel that this is too too much. But here it is. 55 and 55. And yeah, this this actually I like this. I think this looks really good. And this shot of uh, M1 this was taken with uh, my ASI 533 on the Celestron Edge 8 with the uh, Star Exterminator. Uh, excuse me, a <laughs> Star Exterminator. All these X X's uh, with the L Extreme <laughs> filter. Uh, and, um, and this was a very short. I think I have like three hours in this. All right, and I wanted one more. Uh, I've shot a lot of narrow band lately, uh, and I wanted to make sure I got an, an example of RGB. So here's a shot of M20. Uh, this is the 294 with uh, astronomic deep sky filters and my uh, Celestron Edge. And here are the stars. Uh, this is with these stars were removed with the. Um, with the version 10 for Star Exterminator. Uh, one thing you notice, just uh, digressing here a moment, uh, these stars look really clean. All right, so uh, you still had quite a bit of noise with previous versions of Star Exterminator, and these look very, very clean. So I will have to play more with um, this new, newer version of Star Exterminator. Uh, but here's a starless. And here's starless with noise reduction. Now this image wasn't very noisy to begin with. I mean, you can pick up a little bit of a grain here. Obviously it's more noticeable in the dimmer areas. Yeah, right there. But I mean, look at the difference here. This is huge. This is this is smoothed it right out. So quite noticeable here. So at fifty-five, fifty-five, you can see some of this fainter detail better. And I mean, really, what this means is that I can uh, do more with this data now that now that it's so clean. I can stretch this more. I can maybe apply even more sharp mass to it. Um, and I did aggressively stretch this. So you can see here. I mean, obviously, I wouldn't normally stretch it. But I just wanted to see how the fainter stuff is in there. Right? And I mean, there's stuff there. We got data here. But you don't see it in my original image too well because you had to keep that stuff dark. But uh, with the noise being eliminated, you could really push this. Yeah. So, there it is. Uh, noise Exterminator. It's pretty impressive how well it's working. And this is just uh, the beta version. Right, so as uh, the training, the learning continues, it will only get better from here. Just like uh, Star Exterminator is, is um, it was amazing when it first came out, and it is much better today with this update 10 than it was the day it released. 
So especially since it's free, I definitely uh, recommend uh, giving it a look. Uh, like I mentioned before, I'll have the links in the description of this video. Uh, don't forget to uh, hit that like button and subscribe and uh, clear skies.